Yeah, the last piece really was to, to make the system work was disqualification, to have some real consequence for your action. For people who've never seen that. And now we see somebody, it looks to me like trying to take out another driver. Mm -hmm. You need to be more careful. Damn. And if you- he does it again. If you, uh, if you keep behaving that way, uh, you will be sent to the shadow realm. The shadow realm. Hello viewers, Super GT here. We have confirmation or acknowledgement that the Shadow Realm exists. It's a thing in Forza. And today we're gonna to try to avoid getting sent there. So this is the final update on Forza 7. There will be no more after this. So it's been a long old road for Forza 7 as we go flying into Turn 1, try to send everyone else to the Shadow Realm, including ourselves, but we don't actually get any penalties for that. But, um, but yeah, it's been, a long, it's been a long road. It's been a long road for Forza 7. came out nearly two years ago. And here we are then with the very last update. So this one adds a couple of changes, a couple of tweaks to the... FRR, Forza Race Regulations Hopper, as you can see here. Um, the main thing being, if you get 12 seconds worth of penalties, you get disqualified. And I was gonna to try to put that to the test. So Noob City, Yas Marina, gonna cut across all the corners, get a load of penalties, as you can see it. Going up at the top of the screen, take another cut here and annoy that guy. So just gonna get that penalty up to 10 seconds. When it gets up to 10, then um, you get on this it's probation. It says basically a little warning that you've got not much room to play with before you get sent to the realm. And we're gonna get that at some point here somewhere. Just going through underneath the hotel. Okay, and those of off track warnings, not many contact warnings. And there we go, there's the 10 seconds. So we're on probation now. They're watching us as we come out of the final corner. And I'm going to cut again just to show you um, what getting sent to the realm actually looks like. And there we get a three second penalty, which takes it above 12. So there we go, disqualified. Be sent to the shadow realm. <laughs> the shadow realm. <laughs> and yeah, there you go, you just get sent back to the main menu, essentially, which is the shadow realm, apparently. But anyway, let's move on to the next race. We actually jump straight back into the straight. Uh, the same lobby, straight back in. And it's uh, the Viper, cool car this, around Nürburgring Nordschleife, starting 19th on the grid. Let's see how far through this pack we can get as we hurtle into towards turn one, which is actually a well-known Shadow Realm portal. Although on this occasion it's actually gone rather cleanly. So people have actually learned to break on time, which is useful, useful. But this car is actually very good. Uh, it's actually got tons of grip. It's actually a really good car in terms of handling and brakes. Quite an easy car to control, which hopefully does help with minimising the amount of crashes. Although we do have a fair few collisions going on through here. As we're going to come down the hill. Just pick our way through this nice little group of three then. And that gives us the inside against the German on his home turf into the hairpin at the bottom of the hill. Smack into the back of the Spaniard. Try to, try to back off, but there's someone on my back. And then eventually we can just settle into eighth position. No penalty for that uh, collision. And something else that has been added, which is really a big change actually, and it's something that we've been crying out for for eternity, is the time gaps. You see on the left-hand side of the screen, the race positions, penalty time, the time gap measured in seconds and not distance because distance is kind of useless in many occasions. But time is very, very useful, and it's, well, it's how all motorsport measures gaps. So we finally got there, ladies and gentlemen. We finally have time gaps measured by time and not distance. As these guys go argy-bargy through the chicane, get a nice cut track warning, or penalty, as I've been kind of taking the Gran Turismo line, which doesn't really fly on Forza Motorsport. You can't cut it as much on that game. So I need to adapt that. TR the Flash, great painter, but also a great drifter as he slides out onto the wall, coming out of that corner, up into fourth. 
Now, my glory didn't last long. I come from 19th to 4th and just kind of forgot how to take that corner as I just drive straight off and kind of get collected on the way through for a double whammy into the wall. Uh, down to 9th, let's see if we can make up a couple of positions then up the inside of this guy. Get 8th uh, position back as we then come down the hill chasing down our Spanish friend to try to get past this guy. Now, of course, the Nürburgring, never the easiest track to overtake, although on this occasion, just getting a slightly better run. And we're going to get through on the outside, back into seventh position. And it's so good having those time gaps, let me tell you. It's so much more useful being able to judge how far people are away based on time. And uh, on this occasion here on the main straight, or I call it the main straight, it's not the main straight, it's the biggest straight, in the slipstream which doesn't do anything, and then I, I think I made the big grave error of shifting into fifth gear, and you see the, the other bike, even though it's exactly the same car, this car just drives away. So it's fifth gear really not actually good at all. But there we go, finished seventh. Ultimately, I suppose we started 90. Could be, could, could be a lot worse. So we'll take that result and move on to the next race. Now I felt like getting sent to the realm again. Um, I got through the Nurburgring race quite cleanly, so just check this start out. So we're going to go, we're going to go flying in, just push him off, and he kind of collects each of the people on his outside like a like a bowling pin essentially. I smashed into the middle pin, and he smashed into the subsequent pins behind him. Uh, cutting the course, smacking into everyone, and I mean, I think I've confused the algorithm here because I've only got a half a second penalty for all of that, despite those crimes probably being worse than Ted Bundy's. Into the final chicane, we're going to go for an awesome overtake and go from like 7th to almost in the lead and get a 12.75 second penalty, which immediately disqualifies you in one fell swoop. So, we got, we got kicked out again. But that kind of demonstrates um, the new penalty system. You get disqualified. You can't stay ramming forever or cutting corners forever. The other main thing added on this update, I would say, is this Porsche. So, three things. The disqualification in the FRR hopper. The time gaps instead of distance, um, which is an option actually. You can change it between distance or time, depending on which one you want. And then the third thing, the Porsche GT4 Cayman. So we're going to give this car a go in S-Class and see how we do around the notorious Long Beach. Notorious for carnage. And um, that's in all configurations. This Ferrari just comes flying out of nowhere. It does a nice tidy pit manoeuvre on the Ford RS200. Thank you very much for that. Coming through turn number one then. Or turn one proper. Uh, this car definitely one for handling. It's not much of a power car, as we've got more cars in in walls around the circuit. Uh, so yeah, it's not one for power really. Um, very much a handling based car. You can see that here, losing out on the straight, but then on the brakes, really good on the brakes. And that car, that car on the left hand side is going flying up the escape road. And through the final sector, this sector here is really where this car comes into its own. So I was much quicker than it, pretty much everyone else through this section here. But then as soon as we get to this bit, uh, this bit here on the on the main straight, then I was a sitting duck. It's kind of normal for most Porsches. Very, very good handling. They have a very good base, very good chassis, uh, good on the brakes. But then power, if anything, is going to be their downfall. And that happens to be the case for this car. So Long Beach is one of those tracks really that should be very much a handling circuit but then there are a lot of um, uh, traction power zones like this. There are a couple of straights from low speed where power can be very crucial. Uh, in sixth place on lap six, you can see a ca uh, catching with these two guys, I was kind of right behind the Ford, sorry the Ferrari, the black Ferrari there for most of the race. It's kind of one of those races where it was like a yo-yo where I'd get close in the final sector and then he would drive away through the other sectors. He goes into the wall here and I kind of I kind of helped him back around, if anything. So that contact I think helped him. And then he can uh, unleash the power of the Ferrari and take me back. So is there going to be room 
for a move into the final set. He goes very wide. So I'm going to take a wider line going into this left-hander. And just judge exactly where he's going to go. He's going to go deep. So I'm going to cut back on him. And into the final corner. Just try to run him narrow. He's not, he's not really having any of it. Uh, it's mostly ahead, but oh well. It's Forza, isn't it? You can't expect everyone to give you all the space all the time. It's not going to happen. Sixth place, obviously. We move to Silverstone. Again in the same car, but I, I went for a slightly different tune, one with a bit more power. Because um, even around Long Beach, the handling wasn't... I mean, it was too much handling and not enough power. So we've gone for a little bit more power. Uh, let's see how it compares around this circuit. Up against the other Porsches here. Probably the GT3 RS, GT2 RS. Um, up the inside of the pair of them. Return turn 1 two, and 2. So it's the Silverstone National Circuit. Up on the Shelby now. We can see this would be a good test of how good this car is in a straight line there. As a Shelby, which should be very good, does indeed drive away. And you can see all the top 5 all drive away. But then through the corners, look how much more, look how much more grip I have through here compared to these guys. So it's going to be a similar to the Long Beach race where you're losing out any time a straight is involved and then any time a corner is involved, catching straight back up. So it's one of those yo-yo races once again. So you kind of really just have to make the most of your car in the areas where it is strong. I'll say typically in Forza, it, it, it tends to be that the power often wins out on most occasions. If, if your lap time is equal, but your car is um, more powerful than someone else's, the power often tends to win as long as you can control it. But um, that's just the way I've seen it so far in, in most of my experience of Forza. But um, maybe be different of Forza 8. Forza 8 um, it's not officially a thing but Forza 7 we could say is coming to an end I mean this was the final update uh, so we're not going to see any more add additions or improvements to Forza 7 we really do have to wait until the next instalment of the Forza series um, as for when that exactly is going to come out we don't know but presumably if uh, the new consoles are coming out at the end of 2020 you could see Forza 8 as maybe a release console for the next Xbox who knows, I don't know maybe Bill Gates knows, I need to get on the old blubber to Bill Gates and get him to give me the lowdown this guy um, just gave up I think or his controller got sent to the uh, no power realm uh, so we go past him to third, up behind the Enzo kind of eat equal paced with the leader and again it's good having that time gap because you can measure constantly your gap to the leader and see if you're performing well and we are hovering about two seconds behind the leader so into, into sector one let's try to challenge this Enzo then so through turn one through turn two bit of grass and deep on the brakes he's gone very defensive I'm going to go for the cutback or maybe go for the outside line you really have to make the decision, decision quite quickly which side to go go to the outside and it keeps us to the outside for this corner go to the cutback but we know that the Enzo is much quicker in a straight line you can see him just drive away and there's not much I can do about that so final lap now we're gonna to have to get the move done early really so go for the cutback here goes to the outside once again into turn number three the big first uh, the first big braking zone and he goes quite deep there and actually it turns out to be a perfect defense because I couldn't quite decide which side to go outside or inside so he made me delay my decision and then he kind of uh, kept his position there really well. So it's actually this guy's actually defended really well through the first sector where my car is strong and then he pulled away on the straight where his car is strong. So he weakened my, my strength in, in many senses. Through the final corner on his tail but not quite enough to go for that second place. But we move then to maybe a track that will suit this car quite a lot, Lime Rock with both chicanes. So the recipe for carnage is very much on the table. Let's see how this one goes. I forgot to put my headset on, so I had to kind of lift the brakes here, put them on very quickly and then, and then continue. So we lose a couple of positions there. But holding a nice inside line up against these guys and make up a couple of positions back. The Porsche in front goes sideways and we just settle into sixth place. Porsche then goes very wide, and we take fifth, and then another Porsche gets slung around here and just gets bullied off the track. And just having a quick look behind, it is an absolute mess of metal and other 
vague various materials that are involved in cars as they all kind of smash into each other shall we say through that turn back there luckily I'm not involved so I don't mind uh, Viper goes in for a direct assault on that Porsche so it seems like Porsches are just on the receiving end of all manner of chaos and assault at the moment so that hopefully it doesn't happen to me further on into this race lap number two in second place let's see if we can put in a good lap here in the GT4 Cayman as I'm kind of blinded by the extreme whiteness of the car um, and I must remind myself to never get a white paint job on Forza 7 because the cars whenever they're white just seem to have this intense intense um, ability to bounce sunshine off of them into your eyes and blind you um, so I must remind myself to go for darker paint jobs next time so through the ch uh, chicane handles really well this car is absolutely planted again as you'd expect from a Porsche into the second chicane nice line through here cut back for that late apex and then try to make some sort of mockery of that final little kink to the left as we then come out onto the main straight up behind SRT Alex who we've reeled in at a very quick rate of knots he's in the Lamborghini Gallardo got a back marker coming up here luckily they've all but, uh, ghosted these days so no fear of getting absolutely annihilated don't have to worry about that anymore so that is um, quite a, quite some stress off my back. Um, I think every time I used to come up to a back marker, it would take a year off my life. So it's, it's a good job that that isn't a thing anymore. And I just come up the inside here, just make slight contact, go back off then, let him go back in. And then he just kind of lifts off and lifts off again and starts going really slowly for some reason. Then he moves to the side and he lets me through. Okay, I don't really know why he let me through because I kind of pushed him wide and then I let him go back ahead. And in a way, I was kind of annoyed by that because I wanted to have a good battle and it's kind of annoying when someone just lets you through. So two laps in a row there, that should came people just drifting into the wall. Next time around, is actually quite clean on lap number seven. And we're going to come through to actually win a race. So good stuff. I tried to drift the car and... Uh, roll it over but completely fail but that is it for today thank you so much for watching everyone um, that is again the final update on Forza Motorsport 7 I hope you enjoyed the video let me know your thoughts I shall see you next time have a very nice day and tune into the next video I'll see you there goodbye